Hello and welcome to Views on News. I am Jawad Hamid. Today we are going to talk about a man who has been known as the butcher of Gujarat and under whose rule within his own country, the minorities had been facing brutal discrimination. He leads the so-called largest democracy in the world and this so-called largest democracy in the world that is known as India has usurped the inalienable right of self-determination as per the United Nations Security Council resolutions of the innocent people in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, stationing around one million troops over there, making this territory one of the heavily militarized zones in the world. Now, this particular man, Narendra Modi, has become the Prime Minister of this so-called largest democracy known as India for the third time. And this man and his so-called largest democracy have been found involved in state sponsorship of terrorism, also in transnational assassinations and assassination attempts, also in this particular party that he actually leads, Bhatia Janata Party, is driven by the ideology of hate and discrimination. Collectively, you can call it Hindutva. Yet look at his audacity. At the same breath, he talks about peace, dialogue, diplomacy, and mediation. Recently, most recently, in fact, he visited Ukraine and told the Ukrainian President Zelensky, let me quote him, I have come here in Ukraine with a message of peace, unquote. And uh, before this, he had a visit to Russia also, telling the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, let me quote Modi, solution to the war in Ukraine cannot be found on the battlefield, unquote. Now, interestingly, the question arises is, having such a track record of high-handedness and cruelty Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, is he even competent to talk about peace, dialogue, diplomacy, ending the conflict through mediation? If, presumably so, has he got any sort of a peace proposal or a peace plan to end the conflict in Ukraine? And also, can he act as a mediator? Th that very person who refused mediation when he was offered mediation to resolve the long-standing dispute of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Also, his visit to Russia, at that particular time, the statements that came forth from Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will be taking analysis on those statements also. And now when Narendra Modi visited Ukraine, the kind of statements that have come from President Zelensky will try to take the comparison of those statements also. At that particular time, when Narendra Modi visited Russia, there was strong concern expressed by US officials, the State Department, National Security Advisor, even to an extent of US Ambassador to India, will be also taking the analysis on that also. Let me quickly bring in, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Mr. Zamir Ahmed Awan, he's foreign affairs expert. Mr. Awan, thank you very much for your time, for being with us on the show tonight, really appreciate that. Also in the studio, we are honored to have been joined by Mr. Mustafa Hadar Sayyid, he is expert in international relations, he's executive director at Pakistan China Institute. Mr. Sayyid, thank you very much for your time, also for being with us on the show tonight, really appreciate that. At the same time on Skype, we are honored to have been joined by Mr. G.R. Baloj, he's former ambassador, Mr. Baloj, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. Let me begin the discussion with you, Mr. Awan. Now, this let's start with this particular visit uh, by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Ukraine, telling Ukrainian President Zelensky that he has come here for peace. How do you look at this particular statement? Uh, Does Narendra Modi as a name stand for this particular ideal that we know as peace? Uh, peace is a very far away from Narendra Modi. Uh, however, whatever he say is a very contradictory. He was there to get some benefits from 
Ukraine. As a matter of fact, he visited Moscow a little bit earlier, and uh, he also talked about uh, uh, concessional uh, fuel and uh, energy and uh, some defense pacts. And Modi was always visiting any country based on his interest. And uh, when there was a lot of pressure from uh, Western world, especially America, that uh, maybe Moody is uh, getting closer to the Russia. So he just went to the Ukraine on the instructions of uh, Western powers. On the instructions of Western powers, is it to appease the Western yes, allies? Yes, yes, yes. And do, you think, do you think the kind of statements uh, Narendra Modi had given at that particular time, the kind of gestures um, uh, President Vladimir Putin and Narendra Modi had at that particular time during Narendra Modi's visit to Russia, do you think by simply paying a visit to Ukraine, the Western allies the would would be satisfied he, with this he, he, will, he will be he will never succeed convincing uh, western powers but uh, western powers has criticized his moscow visit a lot he just tried to balance it and on their demand or on their instruction or on their desires he visited uh, ukraine and in ukraine of course his agenda was not the peace his agenda was to get how to get benefit from the ukraine and uh, on the other hand, he was just talking about the peace to counter uh, China because China has proposed a 12-point peace, uh, peace proposal. So he was just okay, trying so to China, counter Chinese, China. Chinese have proposed. How can he counter China by just paying a visit when he doesn't carry along any sort of a concrete peace proposal or a peace plan? I'll come back to you. Is it just to uh, show something to China that India can also go ahead with such type of you know, actions? or try to establish itself as a mediator or talk about peace diplomacy and dialogue and ending the conflict through mediation. Mr. Sayed, uh, now, not more than two months have lapsed. Narendra Modi visited Russia. The kind of gestures between the two, uh, President Vladimir Putin and Narendra Modi, we saw at that particular time, also Narendra Modi talking about the strategic partnership with Russia at that particular moment. And this, interestingly, this is the first time ever any Indian Prime Minister has visited Ukraine since 1991. Why now? What's the significance do you associate with Narendra Modi's visit to Ukraine in particular? <coughs> uh, Fahimi Sahib, I think uh, the engagement of uh, Moscow and New Delhi is a historical relationship that uh, both have had uh, over the years and over the decades. And uh, they've had a strategic a partnership both in defense, in economy, and politically. And uh, they've had uh, shared interests in the United Nations. They have supported each other as well. And uh, Russia has been selling a lot of military equipment to India. So the most important country for Russia in South Asia is India. Uh, and I think in Asia, after China, the closest that Russia is to any country is India. And I think that India has uh, been uh, undertaking very deft diplomacy, frankly speaking, because they are uh, playing both sides. And as they say, you can't hunt with the hound and run with the hare, but that's what they have been doing. Uh, the US was very annoyed when uh, the New Delhi refrained from voting. Yeah, uh, abstaining. Uh, uh, and so they abstained. The UN. Uh, uh, they abstained. Yeah. And they uh, protected their relationship with Russia. And there, uh, there hasn't but been any explicit condemnation of the conflict. They have not. They have not condemned. On one there side has been no policy statement, yeah. uh, a categorical policy statement that has condemned Russia for uh, this war, okay, which, so, which so the West has been expecting. So my, my point, yeah. just me one second, is that this is a, a trajectory that New Delhi has been pursuing of uh, uh, staying in the Western camp, the anti-China camp, yet maintaining a close relationship with Russia, which is now considered the arch rival of the West uh, in addition with China. And we see that this uh, interplay between Russia and Ukraine that Modi Saab is doing is because of uh, a larger audience. China is showing to the world that it has arrived, that it can now broker and uh, broker deals, broker peace accords and play a larger role of rapprochement. And it can actually come up with concrete and comprehensive peace plans and proposals. 
That, that is what that, it's uh, trying that, to, uh, through its posturing, trying to demonstrate. It's just a posturing. posturing. It, it doesn't carry yes. along any sort he of a no peace capacity. plan or a peace proposal. So uh, when he was there in Russia, uh, now he, as you already mentioned, it has got the history of playing on both the sides, staying in the Western camp also. What does that particular statement when he tells President Putin that the solution to war in Ukraine cannot be found on the battlefield? What, what does that particularly signify or mean? I think that he's suggesting that of dialogue. He's suggesting the uh, opportunity to speak, to have back channel uh, contacts and signaling that Modi and India, the new government in India led by Modi is willing to play that role to uh, build bridges or do back channeling between Ukraine and Russia and that war will not lead to any concrete way forward for any of the two countries. Right, uh, let me proceed towards Mr. Baloch. Mr. Baloch, by looking at these both visits by Narendra Modi earlier to Russia and now to Ukraine, while telling uh, Ukrainian president that he has come to Ukraine with a message of peace and also saying uh, there are a number of statements that actually require a detailed analysis. For example, saying that we have stayed away from the war with great conviction. This doesn't mean that we are indifferent. We were not neutral from day one. We have taken a side and we stand firmly for peace. How do you analyze that? Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Jawad. Uh, we have to look at India. What is its bigger game at the global stage? Now, what Modi's India is doing is, of course, uh, kind of his, his, uh, pu his puppet at the global level is his uh, foreign minister, uh, who now wears a, a saffron uh, hanky on his coat to 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 show his loyalty to the RSS, uh, that India is trying to demonstrate what they call it now a strategic uh, autonomy, but a strategic autonomy and a hypocritic diplomacy. A diplomacy cannot be hypocrisy. Diplomacy cannot be double speak. Diplomacy is not about about bluffing. It's not about just the legwork. I think the world is pretty intelligent. The leaders understand that what does that gesture uh, mean. So I think, uh, first of all, the visit to Russia, uh, we must not forget that it was the first visit, foreign visit undertaken by Modi after taking one as a, as a third time prime minister. So again, it shows that it wanted to give that priority to Russia. And in, uh, in fact, sadly, he was hugging Putin when Putin's uh, aeroplanes and missiles uh, bombarded schools in, in Ukraine. And this was not kind of uh, uh, put under the carpet when he met the uh, Ukrainian president. He very much ma mentioned that, that and in fact, the media, the Ukrainian media, the commentators, they all said that they were definitely, uh, it was, in fact, the president, uh, the Ukrainian president, Mr. Zelensky, said that it was a huge disappointment that when our children were being, uh, were being slaughtered, you were hugging. Uh, so, uh, well, then, then Mr. Jack Shankar uh, tried to, try to explain, I think he's been explaining uh, at length to various media that it is our culture, maybe not your culture. But the bottom line is that India, in a, in, a, in a way, has probably, in my view, exposed its duplicity, exposed its, its, its hypocrisy. Uh, and I think in its attempt to emerge as a big uh, advocate of peace and reconciliation, to the contrary, I think the image is gone that of a double speak. image is gone by a, of a country which does not actually firmly stand with the charter of the UN where the, uh, the where the territorial integrity of all the states have to be respected and violation of one uh, country's territory by another is definitely violation of the UN and India has a record that it did it has abstained on all numerous uh, resolution they were passed in the UN on 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 the uh, on the war in Ukraine so I think uh, also very interesting, it's actually the, the joint statement after the visit to Ukraine is what studying that nowhere they condemn the war. 
they did not condemn the the occupation of Russia of the Ukrainian territory. So, and these things are not that they are not noticed by the West, whom they probably would be, uh, according to some analysts, they might be sending these signals to them that we do stand with your now a, a uh, another uh, potential member of NATO and the European Union. So I think India is by by such uh, immature diplomacy, I would say, it's not a statesmanship. It's not a statesmanship. A statesmanship would have been they would have stood with the UN resolution despite all the odds they had. It they have become the biggest now uh, uh, importer of the of the Russian oil, and that was raised by the Ukrainian president with him. But then, you know, what was his uh, uh, juggling with the words with the, the foreign minister of India? He said, "Oh, it's not about politics." It's about politics of oil. It's about our majguri, our, our compulsions. So, you know, he, he went into this. That's exactly the point now. Uh, I was about to come to this particular point. Already you talked about that India perhaps is trying to uh, pursue the strategic autonomy. Now, uh, speaking specifically of India's dependence on Russia's oil, in two years span, 40% of India's crude oil requirements are being met from Russia and there is a considerable or a drastic difference that, that has been observed since February 24th and 2022 India used to buy just one percent of its needs from Moscow so back in 2022 it was just one percent now in 2024 it has risen up to 40 percent such a big jump so uh, comp uh, in the light of that particular phenomenon if India is trying to pursue strategic autonomy. How do you look at this particular development in that regard? This is, uh, this is, this is a sheer selfishness, I would say. This is sheer, uh, uh, what, could, what could be a, a merchant's, uh, uh, merchant's mentality to make uh, hay while it is there. See, so they are trying to even profit from a conflict. In fact, interestingly for you, uh, maybe for the audience as well, it was somewhere in the reported that now what India is doing, that it is the, the, the oil that they are importing from Russia, it, it is more than their actually needs. So they refine it and even are sending back to Russia, which is buying from them. You know, it's, it's, a, it's tragic. Of course, uh, India has become one of, the, one of the biggest exporters of the refined oil to Europe. If you look at the statistics, so I think all that shows that how a, a country which uh, aspires to become a uh, a, a global uh, leader, there has to be an element of morality. There has to be an element of legality. There has to be a, an element of humanity. So where all that, it's not about making profits uh, in the in the, in the war industry. If it is, India is doing that, then I think. Is a BJP's uh, India? It's a Modi's India. Is RSS India? Obviously, it's not the India which uh, probably the 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 Indian for founding fathers might have thought a, a India which was which was supporting the South, which was supporting the oppressed in the world, non-aligned and so on and so forth. So I think India is completely different India that we are confronting, and I think the world has to understand that this this so-called big India, rising India, these are all hypes and they have to understand the actual mind behind this all policy initiative as they call it. So I think this this diplomacy, these, these initiatives uh, which we see here are more for the cosmetics. Therefore, for stage play, they do not really, really uh, mean anything. They don't mean to serve the peace. It is about perpetuating. In fact, uh, Zelensky said it, said it, told him that because you are buying Russian oil, that does not help end the conflict. In fact, it prolongs, and it correct also, that if the economy is affected, uh, Russian economy, only then they will be uh, able to think of peace or uh, some kind of a uh, suspension of hostilities. So he, he, in a way, told him. So time for a short break. We'll be resuming the discussion from here uh, after this particular short break.
Hello and welcome back to Views on News. I'm Jawad Hami. We are discussing the recent visits of uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Russia as well as Ukraine and the kind of uh, statements that have come forth by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in particular and the kind of response the Western countries gave at that particular time when he visited Russia. Also, uh, he'd been talking about peace ending the conflict in Ukraine through peaceful means, through mediation, through dialogue and diplomacy. And we are taking the analysis from our esteemed panel of guests regarding can Modi act as a mediator when he refuses himself any sort of a mediation when it comes to the resolution of outstanding uh, disputes. In the studio, we're honored to have been joined by Mr. Zameer Ahmed Awan, for his expert, Mr. Mustafa the Sayyid, expert in international relations on Skype, Mr. G.R. Baloch. Now, uh, Mr. Awan, now let's talk about this particular statement by Narendra Modi. He has at the uh, same time pledged the humanitarian support to Ukraine, uh, which of course, at, uh, mm -hmm. until this particular point is very, very low. He has said that India will always stand with you and will go above and beyond to support you. What does this expression mean, going above and beyond to support Ukrainian mean? Uh, if you look at the characteristic of uh, Narendra Modi, he is a butcher of Gujarat. He was uh, uh, oppressing the minorities. He was suppressing the Kashmiris. He is not talking about the peace and negotiation or dialogue within his own country. How you expect him to talk peace and broker peace and uh, talking about the Ukraine? These are, are just diplomatic But standing language. in Ukraine, my question is, I seek your pardon for the interjection, my question is, he's standing in Ukraine, telling them that, that we are supporting you and we will go above and beyond to support you, despite India being the strategic partner of Russia and just not two months have lapsed, he was there in Russia talking about the special strategic partnership with Russia. The, these are the diplomatic language and diplomatic words. So these what sort of a message politics. it would send to Russians? Uh, How would Russians be perceiving India this? India has no capacity to support uh, Ukraine. India has no interest to support Ukraine. India has no intention to stand with the Ukraine. They are close partner with Russia and they are long history with the partnership with the Russia. But of course, when he was in uh, Ukraine, he had to say something diplomatic words. That is eye washing only. Has no significance. And nobody will believe his, his words. Right. Uh, Mr. Sayyid, what's your understanding? What does this expression going above and beyond to support Ukrainians standing in Ukraine, despite being the strategic partner of Russia, means? I think that uh, he's, as I said, playing both sides. Uh, and they are uh, playing to the Western gallery and uh, pleasing Washington and the NATO allies when uh, going to Ukraine. The fact that he went to Ukraine in and of itself shows uh, India's uh, very nimble balance, the balancing act that it's doing. And also, I think that uh, when we talk about India and we talk about the the human rights violations that it's done in Kashmir, etc. We should also see uh, and understand what they are doing when they are when they uh, are buying Russian oil and selling it back to them. I think that's called enterprise. That is called enterprise, and uh, uh, we should understand and know our enemy better. Uh, I uh, b respectfully disagree with uh, Mr. Baloch when he says that. Uh, uh, you know, what they are doing is tragic. If India is making money for its country through whatever mechanisms, if there's exports that are increasing its foreign direct invest, uh, foreign exchange reserves, I think that's uh, the right of every country. And I think that Pakistan, in my opinion, should also uh, have a trajectory of uh, benefiting from different situations and extracting its pound of flesh. Because at the end of the day, uh, Tahimi Saab, you know very well as a uh, student of international relations, these are uh, interests that are running the international system. They are not based on principles, they are not based on emotions, they are not based on uh, 
you know, brotherly kinship, but it, they, it's based on real and hardcore interests. So, so, so it's all about the economy. And if a country is through entrepreneurship, uh, excelling and uh, increasing its uh, economic presence in any situation or country, I think that is a, that's, a, that's smart. And okay, uh, so Pakistan, I think, has multiple situations like this as well, where I think that Pakistan needs to navigate through this matrix that we have the neighborhood that we have and focus on exclusively economic growth. Okay, so uh, that increase, considerable increase when it comes to India uh, taking the Russian oil, uh, comparison from 2022, one uh, percent, now in 24, it has risen up to 40 percent. Then when Indian Prime Minister you Narendra know, Modi was- You know, because it is very cheap. It is much below the market rate. So that that concerns the Europeans and the Western allies, of saying Let that it's one. it's actually making just, just one Russia get that money, you which see, the Westerns had been trying to stop through the sanctions. You see, that's the problem. That when India does it, the problem that I, as a Pakistani, have with the, you know, the with the beacon of uh, democracy, which is uh, considered to be Washington, uh, what we studied in university. But the problem is that when Pakistan talks with Russia, they say we'll sanction you, we'll sanction the state-owned company, we'll st sanction the interstate gas systems, which is our state-owned enterprise for uh, under the Ministry of Petroleum. But when India does it, yeah. uh, it's okay. Other countries Why is uh, the US other not countries bothered when India does India it? India has kind invested, of, uh, Afghanistan uh, uh, has invested in Shah Bahar, okay, so, uh, when but they have not been sanctioned. So, uh, when, when we specifically so talk about... countries are buying Iranian oil, they are buying Russian oil and they get away with it. India gets away with it. But when Pakistan sp starts speaking to Russia, when Pakistan starts speaking to Iran, which is a neighboring country, there are, you know, there are red flags that are shown to Pakistan. If you do that or else. Mm -hmm. so. I think these double standards of the West, this hypocrisy should end and there should be uh, similar rules for all the countries and Pakistan should have the courage to engage constructively with Russia, also with Iran. They are not bothered when India gets the cheaper Russian oil, but they are bothered with the kind of statements coming from the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan when Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Russia, the kind of statements he gave over there. Uh, also State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller also coming up with a very strong statement to an extent even the US ambassador in India also gave a statement. Let me quote a couple of them. Jake Sullivan warned that the strong ties with Russia were a bad bet for India. Uh, Matthew Miller said, and India is a strategic partner with whom we engage in a full and a frank dialogue and that includes on our concerns about the relationship with Russia. U.S. Ambassador said that New Delhi could not take it, its friendship with the U.S. for granted. Uh, I mean, are these not the strong reactions when it comes to... No, but this is just uh, posturing. Okay. This is not policy. You see, these are, this is rhetoric which remains only rhetoric. There is no change in US policy towards India. And I would say that kudos to India for continuing the momentum in relationship with Russia despite these uh, threats and despite this, uh, uh, you know, these, uh, these uh, you know, uh, uh, threatening statements that uh, you can't take us, you can't do both. Basically, they are saying you can't have both. You can't have the cake and eat it too. <laughs> but India is doing it. India is doing it. India is consistently doing it so and it, getting away it, with it. Isn't it? Uh, isn't because they it know, because Zahimi sahab, because they know, and Zamir sahab will attest to this, because they know that the US needs India very badly in Asia to counter China. To counter China, correct. They need India to counter CPEC. Yeah. They need India to counter the rising influence of China in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. So they need a stalwart, a big country to counter the peaceful rise of China in Asia, and that's India. So India know, knows its leverage, it knows, knows it's, it's in high demand right now for particularly countering China in Asia. So here is the scenario. And that's why there's this so Indo-Pacific strategy in, the, in that particular of the US. Light. In that particular light. From Asia-Pacific, it's become Indo-Pacific. Yes. That's right. the Asia-Pacific. So in the light of this particular analysis that you have, uh, that you have just given, 
when we talk about the Ukraine conflict, India <coughs> purchasing cheaper Russian oil, West sanctioning uh, Russia, and then Europeans saying that it was this purchase that is allowing the Russians to have more money to continue with that particular conflict in Ukraine. So isn't the interest of the Western countries being affected over there as well? When they are so much serious about containment in China, why not the same reaction when it comes to India purchasing that cheaper Russian oil? You see, India is testing the waters. How far can it go? What is the red line? They are pushing the limits. They are pushing the red lines. And they are seeing and waiting to see how far can they go. Because this is definitely benefiting Russia. Such a big buyer like India. It's a huge country. And it has a big economy. And they are buying Russian oil. And other countries, Bangladesh also purchased Russian oil. The previous government in Bangladesh also purchased Russian oil. It's a much smaller country than India. Uh, so I think that... Uh, from a commercial perspective, Tahim Sab, the Russian oil is much below the market rate. It's even cheaper than Iranian oil now, right? So I think it makes commercial sense for all countries to buy Russian oil. It doesn't make sense to buy oil on uh, re standard rates when there's the same oil being sold at much cheaper rates. So uh, what India did is uh, something that it could do, that it's doing and it got away with it. And to balance all of those things, it's also going to Ukraine. And saying, you know, I'm 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 the I'm the I'm the good guy on the on the side who wants to uh, be friends with everyone. <laughs> right, uh, Mr. G. R. Baloch. When we talk about this visit, how do you think this would have been perceived as far as the Russians are concerned? Uh, uh, when standing over there in Ukraine, Prime Minister Narendra Modi talks of supporting Ukraine, if uh, even if they have to go above and beyond to support the Ukrainians. Also, we saw when he visited Russia, uh, there was a statement by Mr. Putin. He actually appreciated the kind of efforts Indians are trying to make uh, to resolve this Ukrainian conflict through peaceful means and through dialogue and diplomacy. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll uh, go to your response uh, to your question, but just a small comment on uh, what our uh, the gentleman said uh, uh, about whether we should follow the suit as India is doing. I just as a student of uh, international relations, and we have been firmly been trained and we have been practicing that, uh, yes, there is a national interest that has to be kept in mind, no doubt about it. But uh, so far, the, the international system uh, kind of is based on international law, uh, international norms. So I think that has to be respected if we want to be respected in the in the world. Now, coming over to the uh, uh, to this uh, very visit, I think there is no need for me to really explain. The, I will use the word of Mr. Zelensky, who was the uh, the host of Mr. Narendra Modi. It sums up whether was it a. Uh, successful visit did he did he achieve any strategic diplomatic uh, mr modi or not so after mr modi left he uh, mr zelensky he uh, addressed a press conference in which he went into all the aspects of it but the last punchline is amazing he says he's quoting uh, i'm quoting now mr zelensky he says this i said to him pm modi you speak with him, means when, when you were talking to him, uh, to Putin, and he was speaking, means he was talking about how he wants to have peace. At the same time, he's attacking our hospitals and he's are killing our children. Then he goes on to say, he's a killer for us. Is he good for you? He asks the question. Again, he goes on. He says that if the during the official visit of the PM, he attacked Children Hospital. It means he did not respect India. It sums up it all whether India was able to achieve those diplomatic uh, advantages that it wanted to. I think absolutely not. Those who will, uh, those who have an eye for the, for the words, for the statements, for the output of the visit, and this is very important. So I think from the point of view of uh, of analysis whether this visit was worth the effort that they put in. No, in fact, 
it exposed the uh, duplicity it exposed the hypocrisy uh, of india in fact questions were raised about their 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 propriety of their decision to buy the buy the uh, russian oil and 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 fund uh, this uh, this war we one, one may disagree uh, with the interpretation of the west uh, or russia itself but we know that hundreds of thousands of people have died over 400 people i think half a million people have so far died and millions have become refugees and it is now very clear it's documented that it was russia which invaded uh, ukraine it was russia which wanted to occupy ukraine and annex it even now also it has annexed ukrainian territory a, a member of the united nations whatever we can have friendship with russia but what is wrong is wrong and we should say that in fact i for one would never endorse uh, russia's act of annexation or attack or occupation also at the same time i would not endorse i will not defend india's immoral illegal and and debased behavior of buying russian oil when we talk about india's this particular talk of indian prime minister narendra modi's talk of peace diplomacy dialogue ending the conflict in ukraine through peaceful means do you think uh, he's trying to just show it off to compete china because we saw a comprehensive and a concrete 12 point peace proposal to the resolution of the ukraine conflict being uh, that was proposed by china yeah yeah indeed indeed i think it's a, it's a it's a, a kind of india at this of course it has a size and all of that but it is a prop we know that it's a bogey it's again a a a a, a repost to china strategically militarily that's why the western power especially the us is going out of the way to 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 accommodate india including of course buying the russian oil so it's all about neutralizing china that the entire world knows china knows america knows what they are doing there's no secret about it indeed whatever we see these distortions these i mean he is another spoiled child like israel actually as we see in middle east israel is the spoiled child of uh, of of the us and the west that there is no law which which binds israel same we see it now for india there's no law which binds india in ca carrying out uh, genocide in in kashmir likewise israel has no uh, has no 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 curbs of any international law which apply to it while it it ca carries out genocide of the kashmiris so i think the two countries have kind of similarities there are extremists in power here we see another extremist uh, group of people holding the power of a big democracy despite the fact that the popular vote is very very thin i don't think the, the bjp uh, count in terms of the popular vote has increased it has actually decreased i don't know why this is not being being uh, in fact projected in the world and why not uh, we should say that whatever they are doing is not a will of the indian people it is the bjp agenda which they are misusing the 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 uh, the, the the parliamentary system that we have uh, uh, in these two countries like the because of the Mr. Awan and Mr. Sayed also, Mr. Awan, when uh, Mr. Baloch already talked about the phenomenon of strategic um, autonomy, uh, Russians, at, uh, India is trying to actually achieve uh, as vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Uh, there is a data by Stockholm Peace Re Research Institute that talks about India, which buys now 36% of its weapons from Russia, uh, with an increase, a decrease from 76% that was between 2009 and 2013. So does that fact actually point towards that India is trying to achieve that strategic autonomy vis-a-vis -vis Russia? Yes, sure. Uh, when it was the Cold War era, uh, former Soviet Union was very close ally of uh, uh, India and uh, India was almost wholly dependent on the uh, Soviet Union's uh, defense aid. But after the disintegration of Soviet Union, 1991, they have turned the, themselves toward America. And gradually, they are decreasing the dependency on Russia. Still, they have a lot of interaction with them. And they still import a lot of defense equipment from Russia. But they are gradually decreasing. And they are increasing the Western or American uh, defense. 
Mr. Sayyid, your closing comment regarding is India trying to achieve strategic autonomy vis-a-vis -vis Russia when it comes to the purchase of weapons that has considerably reduced over the years, now 36% from 76% back in from 2009 until 2013? I think uh, India has no shortage of uh, weapon suppliers. United States, uh, that has now stopped supplying weapons to us uh, completely to Zilch is also supplying weapons to India plus Russia. But for as far as Pakistan is concerned, I think we need to have a more robust lawfare strategy when it comes to India. We should take them to court like South Africa took mm -hmm. Israel to court Absolutely. and one got a judgment in their favor. Qatar joined that, other countries joined that. We should take India to court for the terrorism that it is inculcating in Balochistan and other countries. We got Kulbush and Yadav red-handed with their pants down. Uh, with complete evidence. So we have everything, we have the evidence what they are doing and uh, we should take uh, Modi to court for the illegal annexation in uh, Kashmir and what is what uh, the Indian uh, military, the state terrorism that it is inflicting on the people of Kashmir. So huffing and puffing and saying, you know, using uh, uh, verbosity and adjectives, big adjectives will not uh, prevent India from doing what it is. But we need to have a more constructive, consequential approach, uh, which countries like South Africa have followed, and take India to the cleaners like that. Mr. Mustafa, as I say, the expert in international relations, the executive director at Pakistan China Institute, thank you very much for being with us on the show. And Mr. Zamir Ahmed Awan, foreign affairs expert, thank you very much for your time also. On Skype, Mr. G.R. Baloch, former ambassador, Mr. Baloch, thank you very much for your time also. And uh, thank you very much for the insightful discussion and very important views that sh uh, you shared with our viewers. With that, we end the show over here. With that, we come to the end of today's show. Till the next one, take good care of yourselves.